vessel's up 500 pounds or so. But we still got a day out to get. Um, just going back out towards Chiniac today. A little free pre dawn beta party here. Kind of chilly when we got down the boat this morning, come out. Yeah, so it's 24 degrees, so um, looks like winter's actually here. Bates, uh, Bates a little frozen, not too bad, but. Got some nice little icicles hanging off it this morning. So yeah, I guess it's cold. Yeah, we usually don't fish late enough for that to happen. <laughs> it's gonna be a pretty nice day. It's gonna come up a little bit this evening, southeast 20, but I think we'll have our gear up by then, so it won't matter. And uh, hopefully we can close the gap here a little bit more. Yeah, pretty good fishing. <laughs> I don't know if the big tides pushed them off the high spots down deep or what. We just haven't haven't landed on them, or if they're just starting to kind of disperse and, and move offshore. But there'll be enough around that we'll we'll get them. It's gonna take a little bit more, a little more time should be finished up either well hopefully this evening but maybe one more day after this so it's not that big of a deal it's not like the work's very hard it's just cold yeah it's just cold Dumping some gear out. Nice fresh bait. Well, it's been fresh anyway, but... Look at that spacing. Consistent. To the millimeter. Got pop in here real quick and probably make a course adjustment. We're just trying to lay this gear into oh, the mid 50s to mid 60s, I guess. That's kind of where we've seen most of the fish. Everything else has been pretty barren. So. Sea Link. Can you throw on a rock, please? Now it's just putting on a sash weight. We always use rocks before, so I just call it a rock usually. But that's actually a, a steel weight. I think it came off of a exercise machine. Somebody just left a whole bunch of those down the dock one day. Everybody that had long line gear on had a little bundle of those weights by their, by their boat. So that was kind of cool. And they work pretty good. So we do need to get some more rocks or something. What else can we talk about? Halibut quota, halibut IFQ, how it works. So, um, one of the comments asked how the quota system works, kind of, and if we can fish it on other vessels, if we can take home fish that we that we harvest. Um, basically, yes to both. Um, we can keep halibut that we harvest commercial fishing for personal use. Uh, for IFQ, it does come off of your individual quota. So you're basically buying the fish from yourself. 
we have uh, other options when it comes to putting halibut in our freezer. We do have subsistence fisheries here that we can that we can do. Um, everybody that's a, a resident and qualifies can get what's called a shark card. It's a subsistence halibut card. It allows you to go out and harvest halibut with hook and line gear, basically long line gear like we're using now. So we can do that, you just can't do it at the same time you're commercial fishing. Can we fish our quota on other boats? Yes we can, as long as they're uh, D-class vessels, which is 35 foot or less, because that's what our halibut quota has to be fished on. Um, we can fish larger boats quota on a smaller boat so you can fish down you just can't fish up so you can't fish quota d-class quota on a c-class vessel which is 35 to 60 foot i think the quota is not attached to the vessel it's attached to the individual when you purchase halibut quota you're essentially you're buying It'll be listed as X amount of pounds, so say like a 2,000 pound block at X amount of pounds. That price goes up and down, just like the value of any intangible or tangible item. Um, based on the X value price of the fish that year, based on if the quota is expected to go up or go down. There's a lot of variables that affect that price right now. It's really high, it's over $50 a pound because our X vessel price has been extremely high this year. And we also saw uh, about a 23% increase in our halibut quota in this area 3A. So as a result, that uh, that price is higher now. But it's also been quite a bit lower in the past too. Um, two years ago, it was about $35 a pound. So it goes up and down. Um, when you buy quota, you want to buy quota with the intention of knowing what size of vessel you're going to be fishing on it. If you own a vessel, then you want to buy quota that you can fish on that vessel for the size of the vessel that you own or that you're leasing or that you intend to fish it on. People can own quota that don't own vessels. You can walk on a vessel and fish your quota as long as it's in the correct uh, size class. Usually it's kind of like a maybe a 50-50 walk-on fee. Walk-on gets 50%, the boat gets 50%. Some guys will fish it for less. They'll have walk-ons that come on that take maybe 60 or even 70% and they'll get 40 or 30% respectively. It just is whatever you work out with the people that own the quota. Yeah, it's just sold by, basically sold by the pound, but what you're really doing is buying, you're, you're buying shares of quota. The reason they use shares is because that's a, a static number for each permit holder. They have X amount of shares. So as the quota goes up and the quota goes down, they're just dividing the total allowable catch or the tax by the total amount of shares in that area. And then they just have a divisor and they say, okay, um, X amount of shares is so many pounds, and that's how they adjust the poundage each year. If you just had, if you were just buying pounds, it'd be really hard to adjust that that poundage every year. So that's how they do that. I guess we're about there, Matt. So we can cut it off after this one, okay? So that's kind of just a brief overview. I hope that kind of makes sense. It's, it's a little bit hard to explain. That's just kind of the gist of it there. It's an interesting management system. It's worked well. It did result in a lot of safety and um, increases in, in safety aboard vessels, less accidental hookings, drownings, vessel capsizing, um, things of that nature. But all in all, I mean, over the years we've made the investment to participate in that fishery bought into it we weren't, we weren't awarded quota from the beginning we never got any free ride we, we bought our way in and uh it's just been a long-term investment and part of our business plan and we're thankful for the opportunity to be able to do it
there is snow on stuff, guys. <laughs> Winter time, trying to show up.
great start. Halibut measuring table. I stick their nose up to here, and if their tail passes this point here with any amount of flappage, it's a uh, legal halibut. We became aware of a, of a rule a few years ago that if a halibut crosses your rail, you have to measure it, no matter the size. If it's a little chicken, you gotta measure it. Even if you know. It's yep, small. even if you know. That ensures no high grading, which is uh, throwing back little fish that are still legal, but keeping all the big ones. It's uh, illegal practice. So, uh, like I said, high grading is illegal. That's uh, Tossing back smaller fish in favor of big fish, or just, uh, well, any fish, really. Yeah, you have to retain any legal sized fish. Yeah. No matter what kind of shape it's in. Like that. And I guess a big, big reason for it, for hydrating, would be that there's a price split on halibut. Yeah, a lot of times there's a price difference, but generally speaking, the larger fish can end up a better price. mortality by hand. You're catching and throwing back. Yeah. You're catching and throwing back fish. It would otherwise be hard to uh... Sable fish guys. Whoa! He's a flappy guy. Rather yeah, wild.
excited. I know. But keep I'm the, starting to get excited. Keep the excitement level down here. <laughs> That's the kind we like, guys. That was a nice fish. Move that up pretty quick. Nice little slug there coming here. Yeah. That was a good rally, that broad loud poundage aboard right there, that five fish hit. We're not very far into the set, are we? Yeah. That's probably 250 there or so. It's hard to tell, they're all not stacked neatly, so. <laughs> little shark, little shark and little kelp. Got the schnoz grab on him. Well, they do have a nice nose to grab, I'll say that. Yeah, pretty convenient handle. <laughs> All yeah, right, give you guys a little different vantage point. Put you over here.
a nice little halibut anyways. Got some nice bike catch, got some nice cod in there. So yeah, it'll be nice to get this wrapped up. Get this gear off the boat and onward and forward to other projects. Project time. Yeah.